so welcome everyone to the session challenges in testing social networks by anna boza we are glad they can join us today so without further delay over to you anna um hi welcome everyone yes yeah, so i've been wondering if you um if you ever have been asked um can you integrate the automated ui test into into cloud can we do it a part of the pipeline and uh, i was like yeah i got this you know everything works locally and we can integrate it and then the reality was kind of brutal when when everything went into cloud everything started to falling apart so basically the whole presentation today will be about my journey of challenges in testing the social network but before we dive into that i would like to introduce myself and tell a bit about what i'm doing um so i'm lead productivity engineer at wolf i'm also a admin design lead and a project manager at anita b open source i've been finalist in women in tech excellence awards three times as a digital leader of the year um, for diversity and inclusion inclusion initiative of the year and as a hero of the year I'm also a senior member of IEEE. Um, a bit about the Words Online Festival. Uh, the app which we are doing is actually audio stage social network, where you can jump into stage, you can you can share your show, you can share your music, you can you can sing, you can do the stand up, you can be a comedian, um, but on top of that, we got a social network connected to the stage and the people can interact, they can react on your, um, on your uh, entertainment presentation or whatever you're doing there. They can comment it, they can talk to each other. So with the social network, there is a plenty of plenty uh, challenges when it comes to um, UI testing. And we identify few of them. Uh, so one of them uh, is parallel testing with unique credentials. So if you can easily imagine, if I write my test and I got unique user credentials baked into the tests, then if I run them parallel as in a in a several devices in a cloud, it might uh, clash with each other. Uh, the interaction wouldn't be be good. Sometimes we get like error. You sign up, sign on somewhere else. Um, the other uh, challenge which we identify uh, at Wolf was um, testing event based behavior. So events are the um, type of actions which are not done by the user itself, but rather but by other users or bots. Like I would like to test if if someone is talking to me, does the, the does the message is displaying correctly? If I'm getting hundred messages, do I get the batch with the proper number and things like that? The other thing which we identified as a challenge was a testing huge events. And this is, um, this is very interesting because uh, the testing huge events is a very intense communication be between client and a server. There's lots of going on, loads of messages appearing and testing it is is kind of kind of challenge but also manual test doesn't really we can't really um replicate this kind of things in manual testing so if something happened on a huge event it's important that we can we can identify the issue so so someone could fix it and then the last thing what I will be talking about is testing unique based scenarios. So 
the things which are happening in our applications just once, like whenever I'm registering with associated account like Facebook or Google, then I would like, I, I don't want to create the new account every single time I run the test because it's impossible. So I will be talking, how did we solve those issues at Wolf? Now, first challenge, uh, testing unique user credentials. So whenever I'm registering, sorry, uh, whenever I'm logging in as a user, I don't want to conflict with other running tests at the same time. And now what we did actually, we built our own testing farm. And this, the building own testing farm gives, gives us amazing flexibility that we could actually run a self-hosted agents and assign a single agent to the single device. And then in the, in the environment, we could encapsulate that this single device got a single credentials. So, so we actually, our, our test, whenever they are assigned to the agent and device, they running in parallel, but they do not conflict with each other because the users are different. Um, the challenge number two, testing unique scenarios. So whenever I want to register myself with associated account. Um, but before we dive into that, I need to do a slight recap of what is client server architecture in a nutshell. Um, so we generally, in a client server, we use two types of the communication. We use a RESTful API, which are just simple client, which is our app, is asking something to the server, and the server is giving the response to that request. The other type of the communication is a socket, socket subscription. So the client is subscribing to specific socket and it says, I will be listening if something happening on that socket. So from that moment on, the, the connection is established directly between client and a server. And then the server can, can send the messages uh, directly to the socket, but then the client is actually capturing the messages. So the, the idea for that is just before, because when we, when we have apps like, like chat, uh, we would like to see exact moment when other users are writing something or they, they publish something. And in terms of that, we don't want to ask the server every 100 milliseconds to get the same user experience. Um, is anything new on that chat or any other chat uh, that would very quickly overflow our servers, especially we, has, we have at Wolf, we have already passed million users. So million users hundred times, uh, times 10 times, uh, at the second that 10 million, 10 million requests every, every second, that's just too much. So generally this two communication will, will require uh, the further understanding of what we've done in terms of our testing. So what we've done on our self-hosted um, uh, computers, we actually mounted a proxy. And our automation system is building a client and it says, hey, instead of connecting to the server, you will be connecting to the proxy. And a proxy is a, is a kind of a server, which actually is just the middle part between the connection to the real server. So the client is sending the request to the proxy, proxy is sending request to the server, and then, the response is back to the proxy and a proxy is giving back the response to the client. And thanks to that, we can actually record 
whatever has been uh, whatever communication has been um, has been done between the client and a server, and we can store it. We can en encapsulate it per specific test, and thanks to that, we can replay the unique scenario of user registering as a as with the associated account without actually bothering the the server uh, asking if that user exists or not because we got whole communication with the request and the responses so we can just reuse it um this the third challenge which we have identified is testing event-based scenarios. And the event-based scenarios is like I said earlier, is just receiving the messages from other users or likes or any other interactions which comes from other users and we want to see it instantly. And this is the one which, which goes through the socket subscription. So again, we did the same pattern. We said this at this time, we said that that actually um, server is the proxy is listening to the server and a client is listening to the proxy. So whenever server is sending the event that someone has sent the message to our chat, which we are listening, the proxy would listen to that and then resend it to client. And then we can store that that the message that the event has been has been sent. And then whenever we want it, we can just reuse it. So in that in that case, when I think about the user case of the test itself, it's I'm logging in. Obviously, I'm going navigating to the specific chat, and then I'm asking from from the uh, actual Appium code, I'm asking the proxy to fire a very specific event. And this event is read from the local database and it's fired directly to the client. In that case, we are encapsulating receiving the messages in a way that this, this very device is receiving the messages, but no one else in the world, because it doesn't actually happening on a on a real server. It just we just really um, pretend this environment of the server. And the challenge number four: uh, testing huge events. Uh, that one is is generally very very. Um, uh, complicated. It's much complicated than uh, than what we seen before because uh, we would we would re register everything, uh, all the requests and responses. So all the RESTful APIs would be would go through pro proxy, and all the events would go through proxy, and everything would be stored in a in a persistent database. So, so we can reuse it when we need to, but because those events, they actually happening in a in sort of synchronized manner. So um, the user have to be in a specific chat to receive the specific messages. This has to be reviewed very, very carefully so we could actually replay that on an appium. And Whenever all that work is done and everything is good, you know, the working established, the, the tests are passing, it's, it's great. We having a real, real uh, value of what we've done. Then everything starts over again because someone changed the UI. <laughs> and I believe many of you have been uh, in that position that UI has changed and we need to write the tests again. That's it from me. Thank you very much. And I would like to listen if there are any questions. We have one question from Anand. Uh, he's asking, how is this proxy implemented? Right, so for proxy, um, I've used um, Node.js, JavaScript, obviously, 
and uh, I've used MongoDB as a persistent database storage. Uh, I use Express uh, for for the for the server, and I use Socket.io dot uh, Socket.io for for the um, listening to the specific socket and and firing the events. And that's pretty much it. Okay, there's one more question. How yep. often do you have to update the recorded request or response data? Yes, yeah, so that's a very valid question. So it depends on um, on what test we are doing. Uh, some of the uh, some of the communications they they do have um, timestamps, and when it's when it does have time timestamps, we need we need to record it quite often. Um, we usually we aiming to record once a week, but some of the um, some of the events are actually uh, pre-recorded and then reused uh, because they are unique. So so we don't re-record -re them ever. They are they are like a static part of the of the system. Okay. And uh, Kamal wants to know if there is any sample code available. Sample code. Um, well, I I do we do not have public repository. Uh, but uh, what would you be interested? In? What is it a proxy, or the communication between the proxy and a, and an Appium? What would that be interesting? Kamal, could you elaborate what is the need? Okay, so for com communication between the proxy and the uh, and the and the uh, server and sorry and Appium, we are using for our test we are using C sharp, and there's uh, the communication is a simple RESTful API uh, uh, connection. So I'm just I'm just instead of asking somewhere else on the on the proxy level on on the device I'm asking hey can you give me local host uh, message and then whatever the details of the message or, or you know event and the the details of the event and then our our server got the endpoints which um, which actually listen to that um, uh, to that request, and if it is right, maybe a bit of uh, a bit of recap how we doing it. So for every single device, there is a single proxy and a single Appium server running. So uh, so the the Appium is connecting directly to specific proxy uh, asking, hey, can you send the message X, Y, Z or event X, Y, Z? And then the proxy checking the database and sending the event X, Y, Z. That's how it's done. I'd just like to uh, take a moment and thank you, Anna, uh, for a wonderful session. Thank, thank you, Anna. Thank you very much. Catch you there. Thank you.